Hi, I'm Karen McTavish, an APQS quilting instructor. We're going to talk about ruler work today. First thing you're going to need is a extended base or a ruler base, and you're going to need some clear plastic rulers. Um, I'm holding in my hand some old hand quilting stencils. Uh, back in the day, 25 years ago, this is how we managed our straight lines with marking tools. Today, we don't even need to mark the quilt. All we need is a ruler that has a little quarter inch line in its ruler. Um, this ruler base pops right on any APQS machine and I've got my ruler base on so I have a nice flat surface so the ruler doesn't seesaw and, and, and accidentally um, possibly hit my needle. So we want that nice flat surface. So you can use stencils and pre-mark and then follow along with your rulers but I like to um, just do some very simple registration lines and then we're getting we're going to get going on this quilt so we'll put this aside for now and when it comes to rulers any ruler will do um, we can have uh, curved rulers straight rulers this is a ruler for really long lines this is a ruler for straight lines and um, shorter lines so we're going to start with our little ruler here this is by uh, so very smooth angel edition named after uh, Angela Huffman and I like rubber coated uh, scissors so I don't accidentally chip any paint when I put them up top. So right here we've put four mitered registration marks using our purple air erasable pen and that is where I'm going to turn around. We're going to do piano keys. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a half inch frame around these three blocks. So I'm going to bring up my thread and I'm going to guesstimate where a half inch is away from that um, ditch. And if you put your ruler right next to the foot, and along the seam, your foot is a quarter inch and this line is a quarter inch, so you'll get that half inch. So we're going to just go ahead and start. And I'm going um, to be in stitch regulated mode at the factory setting default, which is 12 stitches per inch. And that beep you're going to hear is just the machine letting me know that I'm ready to stitch. Just sliding the ruler, my ga I'm gauging that seam as my half inch. So this gives it a nice little frame, and I love to do this around the inner border or the outside border of every quilt. And then you stop right on that miter, and then turn your ruler. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna push that ruler evenly, press you know that even pressure against the foot, and that extended base helps me from hitting it. And we're gonna stop in the miter. I'm gonna get right in there, and uh, we're gonna head back to the left now. Okay, so my goal here is to secure that stitch. So if you notice when I started, I didn't really prepare my stitch, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to backtrack on that stop and start. So here we go, I'm gonna try to hit it. It's kind of awkward to do it this way. You could also do it this way and just guess. So now I'm gonna secure that stitch by going back and forth over it. And that stitch will never come out. And now we're gonna sneak over on the edge and get back into our 
ruler works, so we're gonna backtrack, line up that line, that quilting line, and we're just gonna go for it here. Half inch. We're going to do our best to um, put our lines at the very end. Just do your best to, to kind of split the difference. And uh, remember in modern quilting there is no such thing as perfect. So the good news about modern quilting are there, there's no rules. So we're going to go with that. Okay, we're going to start with the four patch. Um, there's a million things that you could do. You could have one of the four patches be a straight line design and the other be free motion. So I kind of like that. It's nice to show that you could do straight line and free motion in a quilt. So it shows that you're a really well-rounded quilter when you can highlight the free motion aspect, even computerized, as well as ruler work. So I'm going to do um, a block that will be straight line in the pink and then we'll do free motion in the yellow. So I'm just going to do an outline of this block. And again, we're going to secure that stitch right here when we come back around. So we kind of go over it a couple times so that stitch never comes out. So we're giving it an outline, just doing a quarter inch away from our foot. All right, so now we're gonna do a diagonal. And now we're gonna do a straight. done. One thing you can do, if you remember on your Millennium, you have a lower thread cutter button. So we're just going to hit that button and then cut the, the top thread and then we're ready to go. Okay, this is going to be a version of a log cabin. Um, at this point, I'm going to do really long lines. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a different ruler than this. I'm going to actually get a longer ruler. So this is going to be my choice for this block. So we're going to, let's do a half inch. We're gonna go a half inch, so the foot is a quarter inch and this line is a quarter inch. So here we go. You can secure that stitch. Stop about what you think would be in a, ha a half inch. And I'll just clip the threads here. All right. Let's put that needle down so my machine doesn't move. So we're not quite there yet. Here we are. And then we're gonna move our ruler, line it up with that seam line. Do the same thing on this side. All right, secure that stitch. And now we're gonna do what's called, I like to call it a log cabin. So you have to backtrack. Backtrack. I gotta remember we're gonna do half inch. So it kinda looks like a log cabin. Now we wouldn't be able to achieve this look without the help of the rulers. All right, so we're gonna stop. We're gonna jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. And then we're gonna needle up, press our thread cutter button so we don't have to reach under and then just snip your top. And that's the log cabin. So now we're gonna cover sashings and stitching in the ditch in the block. Now you might 
notice that it's really hard to stitch in the ditch and get right dead center. You're either in the ditch, you're out of the ditch, or you're trying to get back in there again. So just do your very best. The trick here is to be in stitch regulated mode. And then we want to use our ruler. You want to, to push down and over on the, the foot. So your ruler is pushing down and you're also applying equal amounts of pressure from your handle to your ruler foot. All right, so here we go. We're gonna stitch in the ditch. Stitch regulated mode. And then we're gonna cross over. And then we're gonna go up the ditch. And I'm staying on the orange side of the ditch, if that makes sense. I don't wanna go into the pink or the yellow fabric. And I just railroaded right over my stop and start. So now we can get rid of those tails. So now I'm gonna go right into um, going around this block and then going right into the quilt block itself. I like to slide my ruler when I can. And we're gonna get this sashing while we're there. Again, I'm trying to stay in the orange side of the ditch. And I'm only quilting between my thumb and my finger. All right. So I think we're gonna start here and just start going around. So we'll backtrack. Staying on the orange fabric side of the ditch. And I need to stitch in this ditch, so I'm just gonna do that now. And I can backtrack. I'll do it, I'll do it now. All right, so we're gonna get through this whole thing in one shot. done. Okay, now we're going to work on our friendship star. Um, we're actually going to show you how to use curved rulers in your blocks. So this has some adhesive on it, so it prevents me from slipping. Um, this doesn't, so I've got to be really careful not to move my ruler. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my purple air erasable pen that's going to go away in 24 to 74 uh, hours, you know, about, about two days. Um, I'm going to draw in a, a uh, curved line going from here to here. So I'm just going to kind of exaggerate it there. And then it's kind of going to go, mm, yeah, it's going to go there. And then this one, we're going to flip it. I'm going to do a little curve here. And then we're going to do a little curve here. So I love rulers because they help me design the quilt. So this block is going to be a combination of ruler work and free motion. So we're going to start here. And I'm going to use my stitch regulation mode because I need control while I'm doing the ruler work. And I just kind of secured that stitch. So we're gonna go right to the middle of the block. And then I'm gonna switch my ruler around. And I'm gonna stop. Now I gotta get over here. So one thing you can do is just grab your ruler and stitch in the ditch. Cause I need to get 
to the other side of the block. I'll just get this done and then scooch back. This line creates a barrier so I don't go over it. All right, so that's done. So now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna grab my ruler. All right, now we're gonna fill in this with, um, I don't even know what you'd call it. It's sort of like a, a curved triangle. We are gonna go non-stitch regulated. And I'm gonna try to get about this far apart, about mm, three quarters of an inch. Here we go. can snip that tail and we're ready to move on. Now we're going to show you how to achieve curves and using the stitch regulation and the quilt glide mode. Um, it gives you a little bit of oomph. Um, when we use the quilt glide it releases the drag of the stitch regulator so you can do some really nice curves. So we can either go on this side or we can go on this side. I want a really strong curve I think. So I'm gonna get a little bit bigger curve. We're gonna use um, this S-shaped curve to create a little bit deeper um, curves. And I'm gonna back this machine up a little, right about there. So I wanna put my machine ruler, so I wanna put my, my needle against the ruler at the same spot every time. So my foot is in the corner, but my ruler is gonna land a quarter inch away. So here, here's our first uh, curve. This is the no marking method. Here we go, another one. And then Now we can switch it going to the other side. Here we go. Now with Quilt Glide, our stitches are a little smaller, but they still, you know, look really good. Switch it around. All I'm looking at is this point here, the points of my, my block. and any curve will work. All right, maybe we'll do it on this side too. So we'll kind of do... You could do this free motion, but this gives it a little bit more professional look. So we're gonna go like that. Okay, I'm just gonna show you here how to do this free motion. So we're gonna take it off of stitch regulation and we're just gonna do the continuous curve. Just to see the difference. All right. So I like the control I get from the rulers, the free motion um, curves aren't as perfect. So um, that's a good, you know, you could do either way. So now I'm just going to do a quick little um, stitch regulated straight line. So we're going to, in the pink, we're going to do a half an inch 
lines and backtrack half an inch. Notice I'm only doing one set. You could do two sets of lines. It's totally up to you. Backtrack to the next one. And we're done. Secure that stitch and we're done. Okay, so we have gone over several different ways of using rulers. We did the piano keys, we did the log cabin, we did the half square, we did some free motion, some curves, continuous curves. Um, you know, with modern quilting, there, there is no wrong way to quilt. So you can have a whole bunch of distance between quilting or you can have super tiny micro work. There isn't any rules. So with, with modern quilting and solid fabric, it's really going to show your quilting. So when I see a solid in my quilt, I always do my fanciest work in that block. So that's when you can get out your rulers and your high contrasting thread. Now when I'm using um, orange thread on pink, all I care about really is that I have really good tension and my stitches are gonna show, so I'm gonna probably wanna stay in stitch regulation. But yeah, so the sky's the limit. Just have fun, whatever you do, have fun. It's nice to know there's no wrong way of doing any quilting. Cool